So today, I've got some good news and some bad news. First, the bad news. Let's get it out the way. The Bitcoin death cross is upon us, guys. It is coming. There's no way around it at this point. We just have to face it. However, I do have some good news. Stay with me for a second. Could the Bitcoin death cross actually be a bear trap? Could this signal actually be wrong? Could this actually just lead us higher up? Well, one analyst definitely thinks that this is bullish for Bitcoin and that it is a bear trap. So naturally, of course, we had to bring him in to break it down for you guys himself. Guys, you don't want to miss this video. Hey, what's up? Jay here and welcome to Bitcoin Daily, bringing you guys the best tips, tutorials and ideas to help you guys become profitable and successful investors. The goal of this channel, as always, is to provide you guys with the resources and knowledge to take you up to that next level. So make sure to smash the like button, guys, on this video helps us out a ton. And if you're new here on this channel, make sure to subscribe turn on the notification bell. Let's jump right in. All right, guys, so today I have a special guest with me. Um, we will have another analyst. So you, you guys are used to seeing me always give you the analysis and we spoke about the death cross earlier. So I'm bringing on another analyst today that has a theory on why the Bitcoin death cross is actually a bullish signal for Bitcoin. So let's go ahead and bring him in. His name is John Barry. He's a co-founder of Quantify Crypto. How are you doing, John? I'm doing great, Jay. And I just want to start. Thank you for having, having me on the show. It's a great honor to be here because I really respect your show. I respect your analysis and I enjoy listening to it. So thank you for having me. No problem, John. I'm, I'm excited to get you on here. So a few days ago, I did, well, last week, yeah, probably about five, six days ago, I did a Bitcoin death cross explainer video where I kind of broke mm -hmm. down what, what it was, um, how, you know, what, what, what's happened with Bitcoin previously when when it's experienced a death cross and you know the potentials so you I saw that you wrote an article on why the Bitcoin death cross will actually be something bullish for Bitcoin mm -hmm. so I love to, to hear uh, more on that um, but first uh, give us a little background of on you know what what it is that that you've done because I know you've been in the game for a while and you came over from the stock market correct Yes, I came over from the stock market. I worked for the New York Stock Exchange for 22 years, but my background was not in trading at the stock exchange. I was like a programmer. Then I kind of moved up the ranks. Okay. I was in charge of capacity, speed and performance when high frequency trading was going on. And got you. But I've always been around trading my whole life is a key point. Got you. Got you. Yes, and, make, it makes it makes sense. It makes sense why you have your uh, your website, Quantify Crypto. Mm -hmm. And so my background really goes back decades mm -hmm. for why I got involved in cryptocurrency. When I was a college student, mm -hmm. um, the IBM PC was just coming out. I'm really going to date myself. <laughs> and I told my father, who was big in the stock market then, that, oh, this IBM PC is a game changer. This company, Microsoft, is going to be a game changer. And I said, you have to get in on this. And he looked at me and said, do they pay dividends? And I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> and he totally ignored me oh. and never got involved in Microsoft or Dell computer. So fast forward, my oldest son is in college mm -hmm. and he tells me, dad, this cryptocurrency Bitcoin <laughs> thing is going to be great. And I said to myself, I am not going to be my father and totally <laughs> ignore my son. I knew nothing about Bitcoin, right. but I was open to what he was going to say. Right. And so, you know, spring it, break when he came home was all about cryptocurrency. And that summer we were starting to trade Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin was about $500 a share. Wow. I mean, um, a coin, I should say. Wow. Yeah. Different from my, and so we've been involved and then we would start with like a really small amount of money mm -hmm. exploded. I mean, just exploded. 
and then the Bitcoin crash came and all the altcoins crashed and mm -hmm. everything we had just yeah. tanked. Yeah. So, all right. So let's go ahead and jump in to the uh, Bitcoin death cross. Let's let's talk a little bit about that. Okay. First, I'm going to just give a disclosure. None of this is meant to be financial advice. I'm not a financial expert. And what I say is just my speculation on what might happen. So um, a lot of my analysis is based on what we have researched and learned. Mm -hmm. And I want to look at the last two Bitcoin death crosses. So I'm mm -hmm. going to share my screen. Yep. Okay. So today, this is the daily um, Bitcoin price chart. Mm -hmm. You can see the blue line up here is the 50 day moving average. And the line below here, the gold line, is the 200 day moving average. And these two lines have been coming together every day now. Mm -hmm. My expectation is around June 21st is when the actual Bitcoin death cross is going to occur. I feel it's inevitable because the 200 day moving average goes back until I think late November into yeah. December right now. And so it's losing like a $15,000 value every day and yeah. being replaced by a 36K value. So that's going right. up. Right. Where the 50 day is losing like a 55,000 to 62,000 price. So it's going to happen. Bitcoin right. would have to go like to 80,000. Yeah, for it to, not to occur. For it to not to occur. So this is, this yeah. is going to happen. Yeah. There's no if, ands, or buts. Okay. Um, I'm going to go back in time and just move my screen to 2020. And the big reason why I don't believe in the death cross mm -hmm. or the golden cross is that it is a great indicator for stocks. Mm -hmm. There are so many stock traders that have used these metrics successfully right. and they've made boatloads of money on it. Right. It works really, really well for stocks and it has a huge following in the stock market. But to me, um, the daily averages is a great way to uh, detect support levels. It's a great way to detect resistance levels, but I feel a good uh, momentum algorithm is best for cryptocurrency mm -hmm. and that the shorter time periods are critically important because like the two hour, the one hour, the 30 minute, and even all the way down to the five minute are critically important because Bitcoin is so highly volatile. Mm -hmm. It can move so quickly in a short period of time. You really need to zoom in for those shorter time periods. And I feel the 200 day and the 50 day for a trader like me just lags way too much. Right. Where in stocks, it doesn't lag as much because stocks don't have the volatility. Right. Correct. And so in 2020, um, we definitely had some Bitcoin death cross going yeah. on. Okay. We had a golden cross occur. And then there, that's in right. February. Yeah. And the pandemic was happening. Right. Okay. And so it was clearly not a time to be buying any asset at mm -hmm. this point because it was risky. And this is just a sign that it's lagging. And then multiple days later, the market totally crashed. Right. The Bitcoin death cross happens like March 25th, which is 13 days too late after the March 12th mm -hmm. low and dump. And then we have a golden cross occur here on May 20th. And technically this is an accurate indicator. Right where crypto does leave from here. But to me, it's just a coincidence because every technical indicator that happens after March 12th, 2020 is a buy signal. Right, right. You know, like if you had something saying, oh, Bitcoin is bad after March 20th or 30th after it's clear it's recovering, mm. totally get rid of that. Right. <laughs> because everything is saying buy, buy, buy at right. this point. So I want to go back to 2019. To me, the market that we have today is exceptionally similar to what was occurring in 2019. Okay. And I really want to zoom in on that. Just to give some history, in 2019, Bitcoin was having a great year. Mm -hmm. It had hit highs of 13,000 after starting the year very weakly. Yeah. You know, so we had even a golden cross that was accurate in April mm -hmm. 2019 occur. It lagged a little bit, which is my biggest problem with mm -hmm. it, but it was accurate. Right. And now we come to October 25th, 
2019. And I really want to zoom in on this. And if you go right before the Death Cross actually happens, which is late October 21st, mm -hmm. you can see this 50 day moving average is sinking downwards. Mm -hmm. You can see this 200 day moving average is consistently going up very much like today. Right. And who watches these things are stock traders. Right. And stock traders kind of look down to cryptocurrency traders right. to a degree. They think, uh, oh, this is a crap asset. I can make easy money in this crypto. They right. know the volatility of it and they look and they have their favorite things. Because when you have your favorite indicator as a primary indicator and it's telling you to do something, right. they are going to go in on it. Of course. And so this chart right here for a stock trader is saying short. It's saying it's going to collapse. It's going to short. Mm -hmm. And who else is looking at these things are crypto whales. Mm -hmm. Crypto whales are not stock traders. They watch. And the favorite thing a crypto whale likes to do is cause people to be liquidated. Right. Get forced out of their positions. And at this point, the media, YouTubers, everybody, CD, everybody was mm -hmm. bad. If I can just bring this image. So. Back in October of 2019, these were the images you were seeing for the Bitcoin death cross. Yeah. People were saying Bitcoin is going crazy. You see the skull and crossbones. Yeah. You see the coffin. You see the <laughs> fire. You see the hell. You see Bitcoin heading lower, <laughs> big bear. The rocket ship is going down. Yeah. And everybody's saying Bitcoin's going to 3,000, you know, which is going to be a tremendous loss. Yeah. Bitcoin around 7,000 at this point. Yeah. And so the negativity is just extreme right now in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And I feel that's a lot today. I think in the next week, you're going to see more of these type of FUD videos right. coming out that are followed by the crypto whales. Right. You now, as I was saying, the crypto whales are watching these indicators. Yeah. And in your video back in May, in mid-May, you talked about how the crypto whales had um, been selling and might have been a planned sell-off. Mm -hmm. You know, you talked about that anonymous person that posted right. that there was going to be a big downturn. It was a very good video. Right. Thank and you. then everything kind of crashed. But to me, the crypto whales were selling when Bitcoin was at these very high lofty levels. So they have cash on the side. <clears throat> and this narrative where stock traders are going to come in and really be short in Bitcoin because it's an algorithm. It's an algorithm setup that they follow and they plan to make money. But the crypto whales, it's like a chess game. You know, they yeah. are a step ahead of the stock traders. Yeah, always. Yeah, and and they're they're always taking uh, opposing positions basically. So yes. whatever the majority thinks is going to happen, they usually do the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, and the press co uh, coverage is going to be really negative on this. So, so, so another thing that that kind of coincides and and goes with what you're saying is if we take a look at the open uh, short positions, if we pull this up. So this is the amount of shorts that are up. This is back on May 17th when we had the huge mm -hmm. drop. So this candle is basically doubling the candle that we saw on the day of the drop. Now, if you try to look back, when's the last time that we were this high as as amount of open short positions? You have to go back all the way to the pandemic. So Ow. you can see over here, March 12th, all the way to March 16th, basically. Just massive open short positions. And right now we're about to hit that same high that we were at back in March 16th. So what that's leading me to believe as well as, like you said, that kind of goes with your theory. This could cause a massive short squeeze where we can end up getting kind of a candle like this, but in the opposite direction to the upside. I've been saying, I don't know if you've seen uh, my analysis lately, but I've been saying that if we can get above 42,000, that's going to cause, I believe, a short squeeze where we will get at least up to 50. Like it'll be like one big green candle all the way up to 50, I think. Yeah, I agree with you. I think 42K is a very key level and that 
we're gonna punch that in like june 21st mm -hmm. if we get above that like you know we we break that um the narrative of going dropping down to 30 or below because we that would put us above not only the descending uh resistance that we're watching right now here it'll put us above the 40,000 psychological resistance and it'll put up above that 42 where that there's confluence there with the you know the moving averages there's a fibonacci retracement level there it's a previous all-time high so it's a lot of things there and if you even look, pull up the rsis you could also see that there's a bullish uh divergence right now in the market so there there's definitely a lot of different things that are that are uh backing up uh your theory there okay so this is really zooming in on the bitcoin death cross 2019. Okay. this is the one hour candle and the prior chart we showed you how Bitcoin has really come down. It was like at high at 13,000s, and it's now at 7,400. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the one hour, I look for what I call a set up to signal. Pretty much after a large drop, and we've had a large drop here, mm -hmm. um, there tends to be a flattening out period. And this is what I am looking to see happen on like the June 19th, 20th, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping for is that we're going to see a period where things kind of go flat mm -hmm. you have people that are trying to short it but you have somebody that's kind of just you know i'm going to be buying at this level and you're going to have something flat right but then you start seeing an uptick in activity and this is exactly what happened on march 25th uh, 2019 was you had this 50 percent jump where it went from 7677 all the way above to 10,500, mm -hmm. all within 12 hours. Wow. So this was a massive short squeeze. And the 25th is the day the death cross really happens. Mm -hmm. So you can look at the death cross in 2019 and see it has a high price of 10,500 and say, wow, it was all the way up there. But when I was trading it this day, I was long and I was very happy. I had like one of my 10 best days of trading yeah. on this Bitcoin death cross. And it was because of the setup that occurred before the Bitcoin death cross actually occurred. And so that leads us to today where we've had this major increase in Bitcoin. And we are here today where the death cross is going to occur probably in 10 days, you know, it might be eight days from now, it might be 12 days from now, but it's going to occur. Yeah. And as your analysis showed earlier, short positions are increasing. And that was our stock traders mm -hmm. that are seeing the death cross is definitely going to happen. You're going to see the YouTubes, you're going to hear it on national business channels mm -hmm. that the Bitcoin death cross is a happen. It's a fearful thing. You're going to see the skulls and the crossbones. You're going to see the coffins. Bitcoin is going to die. You're going to see Peter Schiff celebrating. <laughs> and then I think you're going to have a really massive short squeeze. I think this is a classic bear trap. All right. So uh, thank you so much, John. I appreciate you coming on here and uh, talking to us and, uh, you know, sharing your, your theory on uh, how this Bitcoin death cross could actually be something to take us back up. Uh, where, where we can possibly see some sort of short squeeze and, and uh, explaining why, um, based on history, what the price has done uh, on previous death crosses. Um, because at the end of the day, moving averages are lagging indicators. It doesn't always tell the full story. Thank you so much again, John. I appreciate you coming on here. Um, you guys can find him. The, the, the website, your website is quantifycrypto.com. And uh, where else can they find you? No, quantifycrypto.com. Okay. I'm on Twitter also. Okay. Uh, Quantify Crypto there. But Twitter, awesome. but the website, check out our website. We think we have a great website for people. Awesome. Thank you so much, John. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, Jay. Love yeah. being on. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, trying to bring you guys different angles, different perspectives, and different views. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to smash the like button, guys. It helps us out a ton. Um, and if you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Guys, we're almost at 10,000 subscribers. We're only, what, like 300 away? 
So let's go ahead and hit that milestone and take off to 100K. Thank you guys again for tuning in. I hope you guys have an incredible weekend. I will see you next week, guys. As always, peace and love. Oh, 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 oh,